this episode, we're going to be setting up a tire screech sound inside of Unreal Engine. This is what it's going to sound like. I'm just going to do a quick little roll call to make sure we all have the correct files. Basically, I have three tire screech start sounds, loop and ends. Now if you don't have them it's likely you didn't watch the last episode. If you like you can go back watch that and go and create those higher screech sounds. Now if you just want to crack on you can do this. Now at sotasound.co.uk you can get two different versions. You can get a free version of the racing game sound design light. That's completely for free. That'll be enough to get you through the entire course. And then if you want a lot more variation, you can get this one, the full version, for only £10. That's a great way of supporting the channel, and you also get something good in return. Now here is our tire screech meta sound. Essentially what we have are two main branches going on here. We have the tire screech starts, which is essentially when the tires first start to screech, this is the sound that you're going to be hearing. Once you've heard that start sound, if the tyres are continuing to screech after these wave players have finished playing, what you're then going to hear is the loop sound coming. Now what the great thing about this is, essentially, it doesn't matter how long the player is screeching their tyres, let's say they're doing a donut and they're just going around forever. You're going to get the start sound, so that's a nice little introduction to the tyre screech starting to slide and slip. And then after a certain amount of time, you're going to start hearing the loop sound, which can go forever. So let's get into it and figure out how we've actually set this up. Now, just to show it working in action, I'm going to click play here. And what you'll hear once I trigger these are the start sounds. So I'll trigger one right now. So you can hear that one. And if I trigger this one, you can hear a loop sound that will continue forever. So what you want to do is you want to grab yourself three wave players and another three wave players, but make sure that these ones are set to loop. Now let's start with these triggers here. You can see these are called TSS underscore and then a number, which is gonna tell us essentially which of these we're triggering and then underscore play, which is telling us it's a play trigger, meaning it's feeding into the play. You have to obviously make these triggers yourself. If you don't know how to do that, I do suggest you go back a few episodes and watch that and learn how to do that. Now, once these um, triggers are coming through, they're going into a random float, which you can see we've set between minus three and plus three. That then is being fed into the pitch shift. So essentially, on top of having three unique tire screech starts and loop sounds, we're also pitch shifting them. So it's highly unlikely the player will ever hear any repetition in the tire screech sound, which is what we want. Because obviously when you hear a sound multiple times and you start to recognise a pattern, that can then start to become quite annoying. Now moving down here, what you can see is TSL instead of TSS. So this one stands for Tire Screech Loop. That's underscore 01 play, 0203. And it's exactly the same thing. We're going into random floats. Those random floats are going into the pitch shifts. Um, the only difference really being is the naming convention here to let us know it's a loop and not a start. And also, once again, these are set to loop. So the wave players will essentially, once they've finished going around, they'll start again. Now for the stop logic, what we have is, again, two trigger inputs going into this trigger delay. We have something called CF time, which we've been through a few times. It's basically a float graph input that we've created. Um, which stands for crossfade time. That's going into a float to time conversion, which then goes to the trigger delay. Uh, that, I think, will also be tied here. As you can see, this is the gain control section for the mixer. We'll get to that in a minute. So basically, the way this stop logic works is we are checking in the event graph, which we'll get into in the next episode. We're checking in, in the event graph. Are we on tarmac? If we are, then we can do a tire screech. Then we're checking, is the tire slipping or skidding? If it is, then we're gonna be asking it to play. If it's not, then we're gonna send out a stop. This is gonna go into the trigger delay. It's gonna help be held for half a second. And that's gonna fire off through all these to the stops of each of these wave players. Now in the time of half a second, let's say the tire starts screeching again but it's before this stop has been released from this trigger delay. 
what we want to do is we want to make sure that we reset the trigger delay because what will happen is if we stop it and this trigger delay is holding and then let's say we start skidding again in that time then what's going to happen is this trigger delay is going to fire off a stop to these wave players and it's going to stop the tire skid when we don't want it to stop we want it to continue so hopefully that makes sense why we have a tire screech stop and then also a tire screech stop reset for the trigger delay we're essentially making sure that this trigger delay only sends out triggers where we do actually want to stop the wave players okay now what you should have is essentially your stop logic sorted out you should have all of your triggers your random floats and your wave players what i'm going to do is i'm going to start at the top here and cover what we're doing with the tire start sounds and then we'll go down and we'll cover what we're doing with the tire loops so first thing that we're doing is we're carrying these pink audio pins on the out left out right to the stereo mixer and then from the stereo mixer we essentially have a tss vol input here which is essentially helping us control the gain of each of these tire screech sounds now on the bottom half, what we have is essentially exactly the same thing. We're coming into this stereo wave player via these pink audio pins. And then what we have is something a bit different here. We have, well, we're coming out into an interp 2. We, we have actually seen this before in the previous episode where we was, not the previous one, a few episodes back where we were setting up the engine sound. This is exactly the same thing. What we have set up is essentially a crossfade um, function here. So essentially the interp 2 is going into this float to time conversion and then from this we have the crossfade time which is what we mentioned over here if you remember. So this crossfade time is exactly the same graph input so they all influence each other. If this changes it's going to change this one, it's going to change this one and it's going to change this one as well. Now what this is doing is it's basically telling the interp 2 over what time are we averaging out the float value. So what we have is a multiply here. Uh, we basically have a TSL underscore CF. So this is the value which is going to influence um, when this is crossfading in and out. So when it's at a value of one, that basically means we want to hear it. When it's at a value of zero, which is set in the event graph of the player controlled blueprints, when it's at a value of zero, that means we don't want to hear it. So I'll just pop that back at one just for now. So that graph input here, that float graph input goes into the multiplier. At the other side of this multiplier, what we have is a TSL underscore vol. This is a simple way for us to control the overall volume. So when you multiply these two together into the target, we can basically control the volume easily. It's exactly the same as this, TSS underscore vol. So these are all the same graph inputs here. You can see they're named exactly the same. So essentially it is just a copy and paste job. Once you've created one, you can come down and you can create these two as well. Now, once you've done that, coming out of these stereo mixers, you'll be going into another stereo mixer, which is just bringing together the starts and loops. Then out of the game, we're setting up a master gain graph inputs. So you just obviously drag off this. I mean, you should know how to do this by now, promote to graph inputs and then call that master gain. I've set that to 25%. And then what we're doing is a bunch of processing here using filters. So go grab yourself two biquad filters and another two, set these two to low pass, set these two to parametric EQ, and essentially feed these pink pins into the ends of each one. So the out left and the out right. So we're basically processing the left and right stereo. And then again, do the same here. So out left, out left, out right, into these bi-quad filters. And then I've, I've basically created a bunch of graph inputs here. Um, this one's for the cutoff frequency of this bi-quad and this bi-quad. And this one's for the bandwidth. So you can see here on these low shelves, we are setting it to 8,000 hertz. And we're setting the bandwidth basically to one. It's 0.98. So what we're doing is after about 8,000 hertz, we're starting to taper off that high frequency detail. Uh, listening to it, I felt that it was a little bit too bright for a tire screech sound, so I just wanted to take a bit of that edge off. Now coming over here into these bi-quad filters, you can see we have a cutoff frequency here. We've set that to 668. We have a gain graph input here. We've set that to 
basically 10 decibels and we have a parametric EQ bandwidth graph input here which we've set to 3.62. So essentially these parametric EQs are set to add a lot more focus to the 668 hertz area. Essentially I processed that because listening to it what I wanted to do is add a lot more points to that area to essentially make it sound a lot more like its higher screech sound. Now after that what we are doing is we're going to the out left and the out right and that's basically the meta sound completely done. And we'll be ready for the next episode to set up the event graph for the player controlled blueprints. So thank you very much for watching, I'll catch you next time.